Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org, coming to you this Friday afternoon, October 6th. We are looking at ESs, uh, at ESs, we're looking at Window Traders Market Profile of the ES and the NQ. A lot to talk about, um, busy day, a lot of things happening, possibly changing, plus my granddaughter just walked in the room, in the house, so she's not going to let me stay on this thing long, so let's get to it. So first off, one thing I'm very happy and, and actually very proud of how I looked at today coming in. Um, we said we had a double inside day. Said we're probably going to come out of it with energy. We also said we need to monitor for continuation or lack of. Well, we had both of that today. We had lack of on the downside and we had incredible continuation to the upside. When I got on the mic this morning at my room, I said where we, where we were trading towards uh, the lows, I said, I think I'm looking for us to take out three daily lows, okay? But not take out, I was looking to take out Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday's lows. Remember I said there were three lows very close together, but not get the overnight low. If we did that, I said this market has a real chance to turn around. Well, they got two out of those three lows. They didn't get the third one. And boy, did it turn around. Now, I started the day off. I was at an, at an excellent day um, and a really good I'm thrilled with the day in the week. Um, I started off Believe it or not, down 13 points in ES. I took shorts in A period looking to get those um, three daily lows. And each time I took it, it went back up on me. And because I had, a, and I told my room I had a slight bias at that point to the upside. I said, something tells me this market might want to just take out those lows and not get the overnight low. And why is the overnight so important to me? Because we only get both sides of them 20% of the time. Okay? Look at yesterday. Even yesterday when we took out both sides of the IB, we never got the IB high. So that's why I thought it was crucial, crucial not to get it if we took out those three daily lows. And I was leaning slightly biased to the long side. So when I took those shorts and they went against me, I took them off. And both times I took them off, both times they came down where I would have made money. So I was down 13 points, and I was furious at myself. Then in B period, um, in NQ, NQ was acting better. NQ never took out A's low. Um, I got, I did very well on it long to pop A's high in NQ, in B period. And then when C period opened and just exploded above A and B's high, all I did was look for longs on pullback. So I lost 13 points in A. Made them all back and more in C period on uh, ebb and flow longs. And I did the same thing in NQ and C. I was buying both of them on any pullback was a long for me for those two um, in, in C period. Again in D, I did it in both of them, just all longs. The afternoon became very uh, quiet for me. I didn't do anything in E period. Um, and then uh, in NQ in uh, H period I longed, in J period I longed NQ, in K period I longed, and I longed ES in uh, J period. So after that initial short loss on in A, and it wasn't a bad trade, I just didn't have, uh, I didn't hold it because I because of my bias, I thought it could become a bigger loss, and that's why I took it off twice. And you know what? In hindsight, it's I'm glad, you know, it's good I took them off. Even though they came back where I would have made money, my premise on what the market was going to attempt to do today was right. And when we failed, I thought we had one more chance to test yesterday's low again and then fail with the inside day down. Well, obviously that didn't happen. And that's when I took off my short. Um, and that's why, uh, you know, well, A period I'd taken off. It was an a, I did it in A and it was part of B also. But boy, oh boy, I, hope, I, I won the room as soon as we took out B's high. Something is a change in here, and be careful. Do not, do not look for shorts. So um, 
fantastic week overall in both ES and in NQ. Um, as far as what they did today, Righty ends up with a double distribution day and overlap and a higher value. NQ ends up with four distributions, four distributions, and they actually probed. They were the only one. And we end up with a double distribution. We had a triple distribution late, and then M period took it back. So we have a double distribution and overlap and a higher value. Now, the one interesting thing, this is, I think, we might be close to a month where we have not had unchanged value on a day. Will we get some uh, consolidation inside of today on uh, Monday and maybe have that? Who knows? <clears throat> I do know there's a lot of bull, bulls out there that are going to be screaming again. But when we get to the charts, I'm going to show you what I need to see to really start saying, okay, did we, you know, finally maybe flush out the bears, they're done, and we try to start going higher. So let's go over the destinations, and then we'll do those charts. So in ES, I'm sorry, in SPY, the high is 431.13, which is a weekly high, and that's a critical high for me for next week. Then we have 431.85 daily high, 432.27 weekly high. For the downside, three sets of single prints. 427.65 to 426.21. They are large sets. That's over... That's a dollar fifty-four. The next one, four twenty-five seventy-nine to four twenty-four thirty-two. That's even bigger. The third set is four twenty-three seventy-seven to four twenty-two ninety-two, and today's low of four twenty sixty. In ES, single prints thirty-two seventy-five to oh eight fifty. Single prints oh four and a quarter to forty-two eighty-nine fifty. Third set eighty-three fifty to seventy-six fifty. And today's low of 51.50. Now, we still have three lows very close to each other in both ES and SPY. Are they going to hold? Remains to be seen, but they, we still have them, even though we took out a couple in uh, ES. Uh, for the upside, 58.50 is our high, which is a weekly high, very important. 71 and a quarter daily high, 80 and a quarter weekly high. Okay, so. Let's go to these charts and break down what's happening here. So here's IWM, a year and a half balance on the monthly. Just unbelievable, a year and a half, 18 months. But there were some great swing trades in there, including last month against the balance high. Look at the move you had from there to here. Now the question is, we got to this double bottom. Is this going to be where they stop, or are we still going to go and test basically the triple bottom we had? I don't know yet, but for now, it's an 18-month balance. By the way, look where IWM closed, 173. Does that number sound familiar? July, uh, August of 2018, 173.39 was our all-time high at that point. Took two years to get over it. Look where we are, sitting right on it. Think that's a pretty critical level, right? Why? Because if we hold it, maybe we don't test the total bottom of the balance and we start rotating back up. But if we get acceptance below it, then at some point we probably are going to go to the bottom of the balance. The, the nuances are just um, fascinating when you're looking at these charts. So balance on the monthly right at a critical level from five years ago. Five years, over five years. Weekly, still down. Nothing changed in the weekly. Till you take out a weekly high, it's still down. So the monthly is balanced, the weekly is down. The daily, I'm gonna probably still call balance. Yes, we came out pretty nice, but we just barely got above this day's high, okay? We took it out by 173.50, only 39 cents. So I'm calling this a four day balance. If the bulls are really that strong, well, guess what? We should have no trouble taking out today's high, and then we'll definitely be up. But for now, balance. So IWM is balanced on the monthly and daily, and they're uh, uh, down on the weekly. Now, Triple Q's has been the leader all year, them and NQ. They're trying to lead their way, the way again. 
Yes, we're down on the monthly, but we never took out last month's low yet. Now, it's only a week in, but that's positive. Okay, both us and NQ, uh, Rowdy did. So the monthly is down, but for now an inside month. Weekly, they're balanced. They're the only one that got back to balance. So that's impressive. That's trying to turn things around. So the weekly now is back into a, I would call this a three-week balance. I would use 371.75.9 as the top of it. And the daily exploded out of a 12-day balance to the upside. And one other thing I forgot to mention, because it goes for all three of us, all had outside days up. We all took out yesterday's low on the daily, and we all closed above, way above yesterday's high. So the daily is up in NQ, and it's an outside day up. The weekly is balanced, that's an improvement, and the monthly is down, but still an inside bar. So let's go to the ES. Monthly is down, one time framing down, three months. Weekly, down. Now let's spend a little time here. Today's rally was very impressive. Very impressive. Good volume and all, but, but the bottom of this balance above this line is 430.17. We got today up to 431.13, so we got above it. But for now, look where we settled, 429.54. So has anything changed? No. We tested the bottom of this line for this distribution dipped our toe into it and, and now came up and now we came up dipped our toe into this one and for now close below it so what is it going to take for me to say bulls are going to really try to wrestle control and possibly have a chance to make new highs this year well step one is to take out this week's eye if we take out this week's eye you want to take out right you want to take out these previous two weeks eyes but more important than that, you don't want to just take them out and say we get rejected and back down below 430. Now you want to take them out and start eating away at this big uh, weekly uh, candle. So the first step is to take out these two, these two weekly highs and get closes on the daily above 430.17. Then things would start telling me, um, possibly tell me that maybe it's over for the bears for the rest of this year and we're going to grind and try to get to the highs. I know there's a lot of bulls out there, melt-ups and this and that. You're not going to get a melt-up until we start getting acceptance first back inside of here. Today wasn't a melt-up. Today was a vicious short-covering rally with momentum buying. But that's all it was for now. So the monthly is down, the weekly is down. We broke below this trend line from the COVID low but we're above it again. But again, we want to stay above all of this. So important, this level. Very important. And then the daily is up. An outside day up. Very powerful after it. We said there was going to be energy. Well, boy, was there energy. Yesterday's high was 425.37. We took that out by almost $6. Today's range is the third largest range of the year. Believe it or not. And our volume right now is also in the top 10. It's the 10th highest volume of the year. This 112 million volume here is the 10th highest of the year right now. So we have a chance to maybe even go a little higher once the market closes, uh, by the time the market closes at 8 p.m. in SPY. So that's pretty impressive. Third high, largest range, 10th highest volume. But it is only short covering for now. If you want to impress me, continue that kind of volume and range above the net, these two weekly highs. Then I would say these lows are in and we're going to test the yearly high. I hope breaking it down like that really helps you guys and gals. We had a fantastic week in the trading room, not just P&L wise, but educational wise and stuff. Uh, Camelback Trading's having their second retreat. Next week, I have traders, I have traders coming. Um, Wednesday, they'll be here for the whole day trading, Thursday and Friday, so I'm looking forward to that. 
Come check us out at CamelbackTrading.org. Hope you had a great day in week trading. Rest up, enjoy your weekend, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.